Hello and welcome or welcome back to the Knitting Page channel. If you're new here, my name is Paige and I'm the face behind the Knitting Page. Okay, so today I have my first podcast episode in a long time. I have been super busy from like December until February, applying for jobs, doing courses as a new teacher. Professional development is a huge part of the start of my career. And so I have done three courses from December until now. I wrote my final assessment yesterday for one of my courses. Um, today is April the 11th. And with the start of spring, doing some spring cleaning, looking at my yarns, I've definitely felt this renowned, kind of refreshed passion for knitting again. And so I'm leaning into it. I have lots to share with you. I have a couple projects that I have finished that you've never seen before, or maybe you've seen the scrappy scarf. But for the most part, these are just random. The two projects I wanna share are two scrappy projects that are my finished objects. And then I have a few whips to show you as well as some soon to be whips, some plans that I would like to talk about. Um, so let's just get started. Okay, so the first project that I'd like to talk to you about is this little scrappy bag. Um, <laughs> I got inspired when I saw High Fiber Knits post about her Kindle bag that she made. I also recently got a Kindle this past winter. I've been reading a lot of fantasy books, which tend to be really large, and I just find the Kindle is a great way, <laughs> and a great ergonomic way to read them. I like that I can put my Kindle in my work bag and pick it up. I like that it's small. I do love the experience of reading a, a physical copy of a book, but for the most part, I really enjoy the Kindle experience. Anyways, I was kind of like, oh, that'd be a great way to stash bust, to get a little, you know, finished object high done. Why don't I knit a Kindle bag? So I've actually finished two Kindle bag pouches. Um, in the time since of my since my last uh, podcast, I knit one for my best friend, which I can throw a picture up here if I can find the picture. Um, and then I also knit myself one, and hers was you know it's all purple. It was planned, and then I was gonna knit an all pink one because I tend to wear pink and she tends to wear purple. But then I got really inspired to just do something really fun and scrappy, and so I knit this one. Up. I've used up a lot of some random scraps that I had, like the entirety of them are go went into this bag, um, as well as just using up some of my other ones. I do have a scrappy excavation blanket that's also on the go, but anyways, a little Kindle bag. I debated about putting a button, but I ended up making it like a little purse so I can wear it like a crossbody and whatnot. It's super fun. I would like to knit one that's a bit less chaotic at some point, but for the most part, I enjoy it. It was fun to like get super creative and just kind of hold colors together randomly without caring too much about the finished product because it is just a pouch to hold my Kindle, which then goes into my bag if I'm going to work, or sometimes I do just wear it as a little purse with my Kindle in it. Um, super fun probably will make another one. I might make a really scrappy one for my friend Eliza as well. She thought this was pretty fun, but yeah, just a nice little kind of palette cleanser, get some yarns out of stash, which felt really great to finish up some of those little tiny scraps and just have it thrown into a project like this. Um, didn't follow a pattern, totally wung it, th three needle bind off, super simple. Um, anyways, that is my first finished object. The second finished object I knit is also a scrappy project. This is a scrappy garter stitch scarf. It is insanely long. It's probably about three times my height. Um, I kind of followed, I believe it's called the Scrappy Millie scarf, but basically just took a huge amount of yarn and did a long tail cast on until I ran out of yarn. And then I just alternated colors back and forth. Uh, I'll hold it up close. So the color scheme I went for, I, I my excavation blanket is very much on this line of just being totally chaotic, but I wanted something that was a bit more like, oh, what's the word? Like a bit more organized and thought through and like coordinated. And so some colors that I really love are like gray, blues, navies, um, 
the sweater scraps are actually in here as well. Um, there's some beiges, some whites, some light grays, but overall just like a very cool, it reminds me of like a stormy day by an ocean or by a lake, like overcast skies, rolling waves if it's rough, um, and kind of some night sky as well. But like, it, I don't know, it reminds me of kind of being nautical. But I had a whole bunch of different yarns that I've used in various projects that fit this color scheme, as well as just some single skeins that I have randomly accumulated throughout my years as a knitter, whether it be a discount yarn or a yarn I find thrifting or a yarn that I was gifted from a friend who went on vacation. Uh, and I thought a scarf like this would be really fun. I love the look of these scrappy scarves. I love the little fringe. Uh, and I thought it would be a nice way just to get some of these yarns out. I made it fairly thin. As you can see, it's probably about 12 centimeters long. I haven't actually measured it um, because it was so, so long. If I wrap this around, like here is... There's part of the scarf and I can go another time and another time and one and a half more times. So it's like three and a half times my arms, arm span, this scarf. So I got to wear it and wrap it around like six times for it to be at a length. Like if I wear it once, both ends touch the ground. So it, it's got to get wrapped a lot of times, but I really like it. I think this color palette fits well with a lot of what I wear. It was really fun to like, I didn't follow a specific pattern, but I, or pattern or color scheme, I would just randomly work yarns, but I didn't want too many like dark sections. I kind of wanted to be a bit of like dark, medium, light, dark, medium, light, even though I didn't specifically work in that way. Um, I really really love this color scheme and I actually I still have a lot of these scraps left and I have some projects that are currently sitting on ice as well as um a couple that you'll kind of see coming up where their scraps kind of fit this color palette and this color story and I think it would be really nice to knit the Olympe sweater vest by Le Pull. Uh, again it's this garter stitch fun scrappy vest that I think could tell a really great story with this and I think it would be a really like funky eccentric piece that I could wear to work. I think it'd be fun to let some of that creative juices and being kind of free while following a pattern and creating like a nice wearable garment. I've been really into a garter stitch projects recently and recently as in like the past few months, like I knit my Lomi Leftovers vest, I knit the Autumn Tails cowl for Ozetta for a test knit, which again is this beautiful garter stitch cowl. I've knit this scarf and I would like to knit the Olympe sweater, which again is garter stitch vest with double knitting, um, a double knitting button band. And then uh, I would probably make something, I don't know, something coherent when it comes to the uh, ribbing at the bottom of the vest but I did buy the pattern I'm not casting it on yet because I want to wait for a few more projects to get finished that again fit that color story before I start working up that vest but I would like to knit it at some point again kind of having it be a, a matching piece to this vest albeit with a few different yarns and probably some thicker sections of color rather than just alternating uh, colors so frequently like I did here. Uh, it worked out for I every row is it's a different color for this scarf. Uh, I do wish I cut the fringe a little bit longer but obviously I can't go back and change that. Uh, but overall a fun scarf. It's kind of I finished it like at an odd time of the year. I probably cast this off like a week and a half ago. It is now spring. It's currently a gloomy day, hence why my hair is like super curly. I have a light to kind of help illuminate my face while I talk to you. I'm not sure how much wear I'll get out of this between now and the fall, but we shall see. It's, uh, I wore, I've worn it a couple times out just kind of for the sake of like, hey, I finished this, I want to wear it. Um, and I, I guess in general, I've been enjoying some of the like little accessories to wear while I sit outside in kind of these buffer seasons and read or knit just to add a bit of warmth. But this is my other finished object. I would love to knit another one of these scarves um, that's less long, <laughs> probably about half this size. 
and that's probably double as thick. So the same amount of knitting, but just in a different capacity. Um, I think they're super fun. I think my mom would love one of these in like a purple color scheme, uh, but she currently has requested a like little tiny scarf, like little triangle scarf that will get cast on at some point. But yeah, fun to get that off the needles. Okay, so let's talk about whips. If you have followed along or watched any recent videos, you'll know that I have some plans both on a seasonal basis as well as a yearly basis. And I have cast on one of the projects from my spring plans video. I've cast on the cardigan number nine. So let me just grab it. Also, look at this cute little bag that I keep it in. Um, this is from Koigu Wool. I purchased it at Purling Jays, which is the yarn store in Kingston. It has these different breeds of sheep on it. Who doesn't love a tote bag? I think us as knitters, especially if you have a whip problem like I do, um, that you probably have a lot of different project bags. And I would like to knit up my whips, but I've also got some test knits that I've started um, that I'll get to in a moment. But anyways, let me get back to my cardigan number nine. This is a recent pattern by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Uh, she also knit her sample in a beautiful red color. And I had this yarn that has been on the show a couple of times, but this random wool, I want to say it's like a DK light worsted weight. Um, and some red mohair, which is from Ostermund. And I got both of these at a yarn store that was closing in Thunder Bay for $3 a ball each. So very affordable. Didn't really know what I wanted to do with it. I thought I could knit like the Ingrid sweater and make something kind of Christmas-esque, but it didn't really call me to it that I wanted to knit it. So I never cast it on. It just kind of sat in my stash. And then this year, kind of take an inventory of all the yarn that I have. I want to make a priority to knit through my stash with a couple of purchases here and there for color schemes, yarns, whatever that I want, that I feel compelled to knit. But for the most part, I am wanting to knit through stash. And that's where some of these test knits have come from, where a beautiful pattern has come up. And I thought, hey, I have yarn that I could use that for that I'm not really being compelled to knit in for a different pattern. Why don't I apply and give kind of purpose to getting these yarns out of my stash, whether or not I keep the finished product or I gift it to someone will be determined, but I do want to kind of clear a bit more of my stash out and get it down to a more manageable amount. Um, I will be moving in a couple of months. I'll actually be moving twice. Um, I'm going to go back and visit my parents in Thunder Bay and then hopefully by the next podcast you'll get an announcement of where I will be settling down at least for the next little bit. But this is my cardigan number nine. It's a saddle shoulder construction. This is the first time I've ever knit saddle shoulders. I honestly so far have really liked the process of knitting it. It's funny, I used to not want to knit like drop shoulders or anything like that because I didn't enjoy the process of purling. But I've since grown to, I think love is probably a strong word for my feeling towards purling, but enjoy purling, um, especially when there's nothing, it's just like like when you get to the body, you're just doing a straight purl row. Um, I think it is quite mindless to do a stockinette body of a cardigan. You get breaks all the time because you have to switch your work back and forth. I like the kind of finicky <laughs> setup of not if it not being seamless because like you do one saddle and you do the other saddle and then you do the back and then you do the front and then you do the body and it's like very compartmentalized and so you are just chunking it and then by the time you like get to the body you're like oh wow like i've already done so much uh where sometimes i find when you do like a top down raglan cardigan or like this is a circular yoke cardigan that you do get some it can get exhausting before you even get to the uh, split for sleeves which is what is currently in the state for my Eva cardigan. And I do have to go back and figure out what row I am on to pick that up. And I have to buy new needles because I sat on mine and they broke. So anyways, little tangent, but this is, I've since finished the body. Um, I can give it a little try on for you. I think it's a great length. Obviously with blocking, it'll grow a, 
a bit, but I think it will still be a really lovely length. I'm gonna do the toggle bot toggle buttons. The toggle buttons, just like my favorite things knitwear has in her samples. Um, I think the red is such a fun statement piece. Uh, and I feel like, again, this could be because I'm knitting something red and so my mind is like, whatchamacallit, like it's aware of when I see another person knitting something red because I'm also doing that. But I do feel like red is having a moment this spring for being a statement piece, whether it's a cardigan, whether it's a pair of socks. I feel like these Mary Jane red shoes have been really popular on Pinterest, at least for my algorithm. Um, and I'm really excited to have this, I think. Like looking at the next uh, like 14 day forecast, we're having at least here in Southern Ontario, a lot of days that are kind of like overcast, rainy like it is today and around like a 10 degree, 11 degree temperature. Obviously things can change, but I think that'll be great for wearing this cardigan as like an outer jacket. Um, and I only, I have the sleeves and the button band left. It is knit. Oh, it's knit on five millimeter needles. And so it does fly off the, uh, the needles. At least I was pretty shocked the other day when I took my tape measure out and I only had a few centimeters left to knit before I started the ribbing. Um, sometimes I decide not to do the proper Italian bind off and just do it like a tubular one by one cast off, but I did do the double knitting rows for my cast off. And I think I'm like really happy that I did that. Sometimes I'm like in a rush to finish things, but I'm gonna have this piece for maybe the rest of my life. Why don't I take the time now to knit it the way it's written and to do those extra little details that have it be a really nice finished comprehensive piece. I feel like my ribbing is a bit messy. I'm hoping it'll block out a bit, but I feel like that's just the case like a lot of people have talked about for doing one by one rib, I do knit, what's it called? I knit continental for my ribbing, but I purl English and I knit continental, but I'll do my ribbing also doing the continental pearls and knit stitches. But I am excited to start the sleeves. Um, I wanted to film this before I got it started. I can't believe, I think this has been, this has been like a week and a half of knitting and I have had a bit more knitting time due to the eclipse day and due to the Easter weekend where I haven't had a couple work days, like weekdays of work. But overall, I really enjoy this. I'm excited to see it come to life. Uh, I think there's a lot of nice little details in the cardigan. Uh, there are gonna be a decent number of ends to weave in at the end because you do do uh, a few there's like a few steps where it's like do this and then break the yarn and then do this and then break the yarn um which i think adds a nice look to it but of course it does mean that you'll have two more ends to weave in um than like if you were to do a top down raglan where you only have the underarm ends and wherever you changed your yarn ends and your cast off ends and cast on ends to weave in. I guess a lot of ends, but this is definitely going to be way more than a raglan, but I do think the like boxy look of the, uh, whatchamacallit, the saddle shoulder will be really nice. I'm excited to see how it blocks out because I think it does look a little bit chunky because uh, the yarn's not relaxed, but I think after a solid block, it'll relax and have some nice drape while still having a thick, warm uh, thickness, a thick, warm fabric to it, I guess is the word I was looking for. But yeah, overall, I've been super pleased with the way this is working up. Um, and I would suggest it to someone that wanted to do a saddle shoulder cardigan, even though it's not done yet. Um, I think the process has been fun and I do like the steps that you have to go here and then here and then here. Another thing that I'm excited about is the button band is not worked in one shot. You do each of the right and the left plackets and then the neck band all separately. And so I think that that will also be nice because sometimes picking up the entirety of the button band can be a lot. And so I'm excited to chunk it up a little bit while I finish this piece. Um, and this is going to be a bit of a priority uh, over the next few days. I think I can finish it in less than a week. Um, so that I can have it to wear this spring because it's gonna get warm quick and I would love to get some wears out of this 
more than just one evening, the odd day it's cold in the summer. Sorry, Luna just yawned or groaned or did whatever she did. But yeah, very pleased with this. Okay, the next whip I have is a pair of socks. And I guess it's kind of, it's like half a finished object, but I do have one of my socks done from the mountain sock. And this is a pattern, let me just check. I wanna get her name right by Rachel Nutting. So I'll hold them up closer. And so it has this beautiful seersucker stitch pattern on it. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I really love this yarn. I like that there, it's not just one solid color, but there is some, a uh, little bit of variegated with this like light greeny, uh, yellowy color in with this tealy color. There was like no color pooling that happened on this first sock, which I think is awesome. Um, especially this is my, this might be my first time knitting. No, it's not my first time, but it's one of the few times that I've knit a sock where I've also, I haven't done a contrast heel, toe or cuff in some sort of capacity. Um, and so I always get kind of nervous when, if I'm gonna do a, the heel in the same color as the yarn that's like the body of my sock, uh, in case color pooling happens because you're changing the stitch count, but no color pool happened. Uh, this pattern, again, I, I will, maybe knit another one of these again, because I think it is a great alternative to a basic stockinette sock that adds a lot of dimension, but it's not a super strenuous knit. And it also doesn't take a lot of memory to work. I find that it's that it's been easy to like compare. This is my second sock that's, I've just finished turning the heel and I'm about to pick up uh, to then work the gusset, I think of the sock, but yeah, I really love these. I'm excited to have them off. I've gotten so many compliments on them while I've been like working on them on the bus, in my office. I really love this sock and it makes me want to knit more hand knit socks, uh, which I do once I cast off this pair. I, my next sock whip will be a little hint as to where I'm moving, but I want to finish this pair before I get to those ones. Um, and again, this yarn is the Sock Base by Natural You in the colorway Boreal. No, not the colorway Boreal. This is the colorway Spruce from the Boreal collection. Um, and I love it. I think these will be super cute to wear if like, I have a pair of, uh, I have a pair of like knockoff Birkenstock Bostons. So I think these would be cute to wear with those. I have a pair of like Doc Martens that are like slip on shoes that I think these will look cute with. Um, I love a little statement sock. I think they're super fun and it's been really nice to Finally, like usually I get second sock syndrome where I <laughs> knit one sock and I don't cast on the second sock right after, but I made myself cast this on like literally as soon as I cast this off, this was getting cast on. Um, and so it is nice to have this done. And I find once I turn the heel, the foot of the sock tends to go by pretty quickly. Um, and with it being a stockinette bottom, it does go by extra quickly because you're only doing half of the pattern. So. This is a free pattern, I should also say as well. So if you do want something that's a little more elevated with really clear instructions, um, she also tells you the instructions for the uh, Kitchener Kitchener stitch for the, the toe grafting, which I find super helpful because I feel like I only do the Kitchener stitch one, like, well, oh my gosh, speak. I only do the Kitchener stitch when I cast off socks, which is not that often. And so I usually have to go look it up just to remember what goes what or do those first kind of setup steps but it was so useful to have it written in the pattern super clearly uh the chart's super clear there's written instructions as well um it's a great pattern so highly suggest it if you want like a free slightly elevated sock okay i have one more whip that i've actively been working on i have been working on my knotted dress in terms of since the last time i posted but i have not been working on it within the past couple weeks. So I'm not gonna talk about it today aside from what I just talked about. But the other whip that I have is a new cast on. And this is the Hoff sweater. Let me just make sure I'm not dropping stitches. This is the Hoff sweater by Raquel, who is knitter from Iceland on Instagram. And she has a whole bunch of beautiful color work sweaters that are kind of that classic Icelandic style. Uh, so this is knit, as you can tell, bottom up. 
Uh, it is knit on, I'm knitting on 6.5 millimeter needles because I swatched at six and I just got a slightly too, uh, a slightly too tight gauge. So I sized up half a needle or half a millimeter size, half a needle size as well. I believe these are 10 and a half. Um, but this is a test knit and so it is this beautiful sweater i'll add a picture here if i have not done so already um that i applied to based on i do really love color work and i want to work on doing some color work and i have some pretty ambitious color work sweaters that i would like to knit at some point in my knitting life and ideally within the next year or two uh but i haven't done a full color work sweater in a while and I saw the test knit call and I, the yarn requirement for the main color is really not that much. For my size, it is 500 meters. And so I thought it could be a great opportunity to use up some of the random yarns that I have in my stash, both in terms of my main color and in terms of the contrast colors that I'm using. And so I did so many swatches, <laughs> which I don't have here, but I wound up deciding on this dark gray color. And this dark gray color is a hodgepodge. I'm actually holding four different strands of yarn together. And so I have this yarn, which is this dark gray, 100% merino, that was a cone that I thrifted. And I caked it up on the cone. I really had no idea how much yarn I actually had. Um, so I caked it up and I, I think I had around probably 300 grams of this merino, which is enough for a like, could be enough if I held it single but I didn't want to knit a fingering weight merino cardigan and so or sweater and so then I bought some drops flora again in this charcoal gray color and I was gonna hold them together to knit a DK weight garment I was thinking the louver sweater but I never really got it around to casting it on and then when I applied for this test knit I had a few different options I could go for I had some navies but I also know I want to knit my Norma sweater in a navy and so Anyways, this gray wound up working and I'm holding two flora and two of this random merino together to get basically a bulky weight gauge. I'm basically holding DK weight double. Um, and based on how much yarn I have, I should be able to use up almost all of this gray yarn in this sweater with the leftovers being able to go into my excavation blanket or another scrappy project maybe do a little bit in the Olymp olympe vest uh if i decide on that but i knew the gray was going to be my main color i like the fabric of it uh i have an 100 percent merino and then flora is a i want to say wait i have no i don't have a ball oh wait i have a flora but in a different colorway um it's 65% wool and 35% alpaca. And so it does have a nice little bit of a drape to it. It blocked really nicely. I think the dark gray will be wearable. Um, and then once I decided on the background color, I knew my options for the, it's, there's three colors going on in here. So hopefully you could see that clearly. Um, as you can see, I decided on doing a purple and a green as my contrast colors. Again, kind of bringing in those spring vibes. Uh, I got some advice from my friend Eliza on what colors to do. She's a big purple gal and I love this like lilac purple color. Um, and then I was debating on whether to do a medium gray or go for something more bold like the green. And I'm really glad I went for the green. I think that like when I hold it up af from afar, it looks really beautiful there's enough contrast that when you see it in person you can you can see that there's a difference between it i think it's springy um i think it'll be really unique and i i don't know i if you've been around if you follow me on instagram you know that i'm not afraid of color um and that i'm not afraid of doing things that are not necessarily of the ordinary and being only neutrals um but i had this as a briggs and little yarn I believe this is a worsted weight. It has these little flecks of blue in it. Uh, it's really beautiful. And I got this from a yarn shop in Picton. Uh, the name is escaping my mind right now, but I got it there and I thought I was gonna do some color work between this and dark purple that I got, but <laughs> I to do mittens or something. 
I have not. Um, and then I also have this Drops Alpaca that's leftovers from knitting a uh, beret and a mitten set uh, for a friend. And then I have this yarn, which is Double Sunday by Sandness Garn that was gifted to me from Emily from High Fiber Knits. They're leftovers uh, from that beautiful green t-shirt that she knit her Nona uh, in that sunny lime colorway. And holding it double, again, gets me to this bulky weight. I thought it's purple and green, especially like a greeny yellow and purple is almost complimentary colors. I thought it was super fun and springy. I think it looks cute with the dark uh, background color. I went with it. And again, if I wind up finishing this and I don't love it for me, I can always gift it to someone. I think it'll be a really nice sweater that I can wear with like a pair of jeans, with like uh, a little denim skirt, with uh, like a, I don't know, white pants, have some white capris. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't have, I had purple pants, but I've since uh, donated them back to the thrift store. Ah, my stitches fell off. It is quite slippery and I'm working with a, whatchamacallit, a cable that's probably a little bit too short for the actual size of the sweater, but it's what I had on hand. That's a test knit. Honestly, this has flown off my needles because it's knit on a 6.5 millimeter needle. And because, I don't know, I find color work is really addicting to do because you just want to get to the next section. Um, it has been really fun to work on. I am really excited to get to the yoke section of the sweater. It is a circular knit sweater, which I don't own a circular knit sweater, but I do have two circular knit cardigans, one of which I'm wearing. And I honestly have been loving both of them recently. I've worn them on a weekly basis. This is the novice sweater by Petite Knit. Um, it was the first cardigan, like proper cardigan I ever knit. Um, I using it using I'm uh, using I used a Manos del Uruguay uh, merino and silk yarn that's like a light fingering I knit off cage at like knit a size large even though I'm typically a size small when it comes to petite knit patterns um, and yeah I I've been loving it I wear it a lot with just the one button open and then as a like with the one button and then a tank top underneath but today I'm wearing it kind of as a shirt. Um, so I, I'm excited to see what a circular knit sweater, how I'll feel about that. I do like the traditional Icelandic color work in it. Um, and so I think it'll be just like a nice, fun statement sweater I can wear without being too loud because of that gray background color. So I have no doubt in my mind that I'll be able to finish this by the test knit deadline. She gave us a nice deadline, but I'm honestly, it's either like, it's between four and eight weeks. I don't actually remember all the way. Um, but this has been like three days of knitting as well as working on my uh, cardigan number nine. And I do knit fairly quickly, but it's been flying off the needles. And so I'm actually almost done the body and then I get to knit both the sleeves since it's bottom up and then join in around to do the yoke, which I'm super excited about because I get to work more fun, complex color work. So. That is my, those are my whips. I have three of them right now that I've actively been working on. I've got lots on ice that will come into play at some point, but not right now. Now, I do have a couple of plans to cast on that are different from what I have talked about in my videos. Um, they are both test knits and they are both test knits that I applied to, again, with this idea of using up yarn that I have in my stash. And so the first project that I would like to cast on and work on is the Virchen, I want to say. Virchen, it's B-I-R-I-C-H-E-N, uh, shawl by Journey Through Yarn, who is also, her name's Rebecca, and she's the designer. And it's this beautiful abstract cable shawl. And <laughs> I don't have a shawl in my wardrobe. I've really wanted a shawl in my wardrobe, but I have been hesitant to cast one on because I'm not a shawl knitter, at least not yet. Um, and honestly, sometimes when I'm debating about whether or not to cast on a pattern, I just don't do it. But where I find test knits are a great way for me to knit something that I may not always 
like choose to knit for myself and gain more skill or gain a garment that I wouldn't necessarily immediately jump to. Um, like I, my first color work I did was a test knit because I wanted to challenge myself and have the pressure of finishing the mitten. Um, and so the same principle kind of applied to knitting this shawl. I applied to it because A, I thought it was beautiful. I'm a huge fan of cables, absolutely love them. I love that this shawl is based off of a natural landscape. Um, it's based off of a, uh, the Scotland Hills. Um, and then it's using a DK weight yarn. And so I have a few DK weight options in my stash that I knew I could use towards this. They're kind of odd quantities that could make a tank top or a shawl. Um, but again, I just didn't really know what shawl to go for. Anyways, I applied for the test knit, I got chosen. I'm excited to knit this up. And so the colorway that I'm going to use is Petroleum in uh, the base alpaca by Santa Scarn. And that's not exactly its true color as it's getting really washed out by the fluorescent light that's shining on it. But this yarn was also gifted to me um, from by Emily from High Fiber Knits. Uh, she is really sensitive to alpaca, where I find alpaca is one uh, is a fiber that I really love. And I actually have a bit more sensitivity to mohair than I do to, do to alpaca. I'm not super sensitive about any fibers that I've worked with thus far. Um, but I thought a nice cable shawl would be really beautiful in this dark greeny blue color. I feel like it's a color that, again, grays, greens, blues are colors that I gravitate towards a lot, as are bright colors. Um, I just like, <laughs> I like all colors. Um, but I figure that this could be, it calls for four balls of DK. These balls are slightly less than the ones that she was working with, which just means that my shawl will be slightly smaller than her shawl, um, but she was totally okay with that and it's gonna use up every single bit of this yarn, which will be amazing. I'm excited to get going on this. Uh, I think I'm going to Montreal next weekend to go visit a friend, and this may be the knit that I bring on the train with me and to work on. It's gonna depend on how uh, finicky the pattern is and whether or not I will have to reference the charts all the time. Uh, she did design it for, so that it could be knit by a motivated beginner and so I think it's definitely within my capability to knit. Um, and so it would likely be the project that I bring to Montreal to knit on the train and in the evenings while I'm hanging out with my friend. Uh, so very excited to get this cast on but I want to finish my cardigan number nine and get going on the sleeves to my cardigan, not my cardigan, my Hoff sweater before I start on this, which I think if I bring this as my only project to Montreal, I should be able to get a huge amount of work done because a train ride is about like four or five hours and that's if there's no delays, which means lots of shawl knitting time. I should also say on the train, I have the ability to like, be engaged in my knitting and so I think it could be a great chance to knit the shawl and I'll maybe throw in a sock just in case I do want to switch things up just a little bit. The last project that I am going to cast on is another test knit and this is with yarn that you have seen before. You saw it in my Make 9 videos and I am changing my plans, I know. This is the Drops Brushed Alpaca Silk and Drops Flora, and I'm going to hold these two together to knit a nice, light, airy cardigan that is the Cognac cardigan. And again, I hope I'm saying Cognac right, um, but this is a cardigan by Atelier Castin, which again, apologize if I mispronounced your name. But I applied for this test knit. I had a, again, I have a few random quantities of yarn in my stash that could be a sweater or a cardigan. And I love the delicate details of this cardigan. I think it's a great cardigan to transition to spring summer. Um, I have a knitting loft sock base in this beautiful purple color, as well as uh, knitting for olive mohair in their uniform purple color. And I thought I was gonna knit that with it, but I actually haven't swatched and I think that it's going to be just slightly too airy and gapy of a fabric for what I'm looking for. But I swatched for this for the sweater number 14 v-neck by my favorite things knitwear using this yarn. 
and at six on six millimeter needles, which is what this pattern is uh, written for. And I loved the fabric. I think it's really light and airy, but not so light and airy to the point where it's like gapy and you could stick your fingers through it. Um, and so I think this will be really nice. I also don't have a gray cardigan or really a neutral cardigan that I'd knit myself. I have a gray, really bulky weight sweater, um, my hollow sweater, which is a cable sweater that I wear quite often, but I don't have anything subtle in terms of cardigans. I have two pink ones, a neon green one, and this one, which is my most like neutral one, but it still is with variegated yarn. It's got some stuff going on. So I think this will be a great addition to my wardrobe. It's using some stash yarn, which who doesn't love use, using stash yarn? And if I have leftover flora, um, there's this vest that I really want to knit um, using drops air and a fingering weight light gray. And so that'll go into that. And again, the name of the vest is escaping my head, but I'll put a picture here of what I can do with the leftovers if I have enough leftover flora um, to knit this vest. Again, using more stash yarn. So this will be another cast on. And again, I'm definitely waiting for my cardigan number nine to be done. I'm trying to be a bit better at not having a bajillion whips on the go. Um, but yeah, uh, I have been English. Where was that? I forgot where my thoughts were going. But yeah, I applied for a lot of test knits, which I feel like I apply because I don't know if I'm going to get into all of them. And I actually have applied for two more, which I haven't heard back from. So I'm either hoping that they get back to me in a week when I've gotten maybe my hot sweater done or something like that. Um, but applying to test knits used for yarn that I already have in my stash to help get out of my stash. And again, whether that's for a gift or myself is to be determined. Um, but I do want to work through my stash. So yeah, I also, I'm going to run right back because I do have some acquisitions. Okay, <laughs> I'm back. Um, I went to my local <laughs> knitting store, Yarnet, and I wound up, I went in for six millimeter uh, interchangeable needle tips. But of course, it's sometimes hard to go in and not come out with yarn. And one thing that's been top of mind is sock knitting. And I do have a decent amount of sock yarn in stash, but this one <laughs> idea of socks that is like a frilly red pair of socks that I could wear with my loafers has been stuck in my head. And so I found this red, which is like the perfect kind of like true bright crispy red that is what I have in my head. I don't want anything too burgundy. I don't want anything orange. I want like a true bright, like obnoxious primary red. And so I got this one and this is, I believe it's Cascades. Yes, Cascades Heritage Sock. Let's see if, what, if it gives me a color. In the color number 5619. So again, this beautiful red color I am going to use it for a pair of red frilly socks, but before I get to those, I'm going to use this red in the socks that will give you a hint to where I'm moving, which will get cast on after my mountain socks. And so I did purchase this yarn. I was also walking around the store. I brought my friend Eliza with me um, and I have this idea. I've been knitting and again, one of you may be watching this, I highly doubt it, but I've been knitting socks. They're in my work project bag that I'll throw in. Um, I'll knit it during my prep if I have like a down 15 minutes after I've uh, done prepping for the lesson or we have like some, some small breaks or after school when I'm waiting between uh, teaching and coaching, I'll do a couple rounds on my socks. And my office has been very intrigued with my sock knitting. And so, I do really love gifting people knitted projects. And often, oftentimes it winds up me wearing like a hat and someone being like, oh my gosh, I love your hat. And me just being like, oh my gosh, here you go, take it. But I thought it could be really fun. Again, I have more sock yarn that I know what I'm gonna do with, but I thought it could be fun to over between now and December knit my 
office, my science department, uh, everyone a pair of socks. And so there was some sock yarn on sale at Yarnet, and I wound up picking some up because A, they're bases that I don't usually use. They were on sale, and again, it's kind of for this I want to knit people socks that I know they're going to love, um, just like I don't want to knit anyone something that they're going to love and use and appreciate. And so I purchased this purple uh, for one of my colleagues that I, 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 I know she'll love. Um, this is in, this is Tenderfoot by Queensland, uh, and it is a merino lambswool that's non-superwash with polyamide. Uh, I actually purchased this in both this purple color and this like bluey, icy color. Um, both, both of which I think that there are some women in my office that would love a pair of socks in a, one of these colorways. Uh, so I bought them with them in mind and I won't be working at the same school next year, uh, but I really want to send, have it be a surprise, unless they wind up watching my videos, which if you do, hey, not a surprise, try to, you can tell them or not, but I want to knit um, a pair of socks for everyone and then send it to them at Christmas time and have them like open it up and be like, oh my gosh, like Paige thought of us because they've all been like so great at being mentors, at being in my back corner, at supporting me in everything I do. Uh, and I think socks are a nice little knit that A, I like having a pair as my like little travel project wherever I go right now. Um, and then it can be a great way to, to use up some of the yarns I have as well as buy some newer yarns that I have a direct purpose for. Uh, on that same note, I got this neon green yarn um, that is KFI Collection Indulgence Kettle Dyed Fingering, and it's an extra fine merino superwash wool that's 75% superwash merino and 25% polyamide. One of my co-workers, he he always wears funky socks and so I think he would really appreciate a pair of, I don't know what I would do with this, but this kind of fits like the fun statement sock that he often wears with like a subdued outfit, but to do something fun and color work. I'm, part of me is looking to like finding something like dinosaur themed or something like that because we teach science and he has young boys and anyways, I think that this yarn would be super great for knitting him a pair of color work socks. Um, it was on sale. I thought it was a super fun color. I got it. Uh, so yeah, I know there's also some lavender socks I would like to knit myself and use this green as like the stem. So trying to build up, once I knit these, again, having some nice scrap sock yarns that I can do these different color work patterns. But I bought four sock yarns. This one is for myself and the other ones are likely gonna be for my work companions uh where i again would like even if i knit them a uh, one sock from now a um, one pair of socks a month from now until the end of the school year with the intentions of sending this like little christmas sock package to them uh just to kind of say you know thank you for making my first year of teaching so wonderful um but yeah that is all i have for you today i'm so happy to be back here posting and creating content as well as creating wonderful pieces of knitwear. Uh, I look forward to catching up with you soon. I am really trying to prioritize finding time every week to film and edit and upload. Uh, so yeah, thanks for the continued support. Thank you for being gracious and patient as I prioritized my <laughs> career for next year um, and I'm excited to tell you more about that hopefully in the next episode. Until then, peace out and have a wonderful time crafting. Bye!